Hello, my name is Jeff Mazur. I will be taking you through an overview of the IFS Freight Interface Solution. Um, to give you an overview, we'll go through some PowerPoint slides and then we'll also show you the, the software in action. Uh, we have some basic concepts. Um, we add, basically it's a, some new procedure that reads information from the IFS inbox and processes the shipment information into, into IFS. So it's, it's utilizing a, an interface between UPS, WorldShip, the FedEx tools, uh, and then a, a few others that are out there. And it allows you to put in the weights utilizing their tools um, and, and their freight solutions solutions and then writes back that information to IFS and to add and remove charges automatically on the customer order that you're going to uh, pass on to the customer. Um, we can add new views and tables within IFS that contain the information uh, that the shipping software will utilize. So there's a few new, there's a new install that needs to be done when you, when you buy this. But once you have this, then information such as your tracking numbers um, from UPS or FedEx are sent back into IFS, so then you can write mouse button from the customer order line and, and go right to the UPS site to see where that tracking number is. And it also sends back the, the charge information. So you can you know, send that $50 or $500 uh, freight charge back to the customer when, when you create the invoice for that customer order. Right now it works with the IFS, uh, IFS Freight, works with the UPS World Ship, FedEx Ship Manager, um, <coughs> Logistics, and uh, Blue Jay Solutions, uh, formerly Clipper Ship and, and Agile. Um, the first two are fairly easy to configure for most people. Um, the second two would require some additional consulting from both these companies and, uh, and from IFS as well to, to help get it configured and set up. UPS World Ship, it's user configurable, as I mentioned, through an ODBC connection. Uh, you go in there and you, you map out the fields. Um, we've got a document that walks you through how to do all that. Uh, we have separate tables and views with one specific freight user, uh, access and security. Uh, the freight user does not have direct access to the IFS applications then. Um, it, it's just used for, for the interface. And IFS does offer the predefined mapping. Uh, so you don't have to come up with it from scratch every time. Uh, similar is the freight, the FedEx freight interface, um, and FedEx will provide this integration work for free. Um, in the past, they've they've been able to do that for for our customers. And then the other ones, uh, Blue Jay and Logistics, um, it, it is ready to utilize the interface, but there's a little more setup and configuration that has to be done by by their consultants uh, to help you get their their solutions up and running. And the basic change here is, you know, we're using an ODBC connection uh, to IFS, and it's from the IFS side, we're creating the order delivery note, uh, create the shipment freight data. Uh, we can utilize this on an RMA, so you can get freight data back onto an RMA as well from the shipping system. And basically, there's just a header and detail view, um, and then you import that information from IFS over into the freight software through this connection method. The freight software then does the gets the rates and you confirm the shipment over there. Uh, you can void shipments and that'll write back to IFS and cancel the shipment, cancel the charges and such too. Uh, but when you confirm that shipment, it runs it through the shipment table and it processes the freight records and it manages and to maintain the data and the charges and tracking data over on the IFS order side. <coughs> So what do you get with the freight interface? Um, the freight interface is obviously going to have its own new set of folders. Um, if you don't own it today, you won't see these folders out on your navigator. But there's a, there's a few of them out there. Um, obviously, on, in the details, we're going to be tracking a lot. A lot of people just be utilizing the data from the customer order and the shipment side itself. But there are some detailed tables behind here that track all the freight information. So what addresses am I shipping to? What what are my charges that have come back? And it tracks a lot of details in there. So you can always drill into that uh, uh, information. It also tracks freight errors. If it can't write something back or it can't, uh, can't handle something, it gives you some error messaging. So you can take care of that and manage it and get notified through events and such um, of those errors. And then there's some basic data. So we'll take a look at some of these things. Uh, the, the main place you'll probably interact with this is on your customer order. Um, we can see there's some new fields called freight info and freight tracking. The freight tracking tab here, for example, shows you the delivery information. When you first create the, the delivery note, then it, it adds, a, adds the first line to get some information ready to send over to the freight interface. 
once the freight interface is done and you've entered your your weights and such over in the UPS world ship it'll write back the tracking number the plan dates and times the weights the package charges and, and any other pertinent information for you it'll also update the charges tab then so this ten dollars and ninety four cents for the charge will show up on the charges tab if you set it up in such a way and it will uh, it will let you do that so you can set that up all in the basic data um, on the customer record itself, there's some new fields, um, both on the kind of on the address, and it utilizes the contacts and communication methods for the for the freight information to send over to to UPS or FedEx or one one of the other ones. Then you have the freight information uh, right here, so you get a new tab on the customer record itself, and you can put in your default information for UPS or FedEx or depends on what what tools you're using, and then you can load in your account information for that customer. You put in your, your account and what address ID should be the default um, to use whenever you're shipping to this customer using UPS, for example. Um, and that'll pull into the freight interface and the ad, right address will pull in and, and you can go from there. But uh, if you have different accounts for whatever reason for different address IDs, you can set up multiples. Um, on the customer address tab itself, there's a new sub tab. Um, and it's a checkbox for residential address or not, so you can specify that. That's something that gets passed over to UPS uh, for their information. So in order to show you uh, one of the options of the UPS World Ship, for example, um, this is the actual software that would be running out on the shipment department's uh, terminal, probably. And you might have a scale or things like a scale hooked up to this, possibly a label printer um, to print out the actual labels and such. But once you get this set up and configured, um, there are some, some tools to do that for editing the map information, the mapping between IFS and UPS. Um, as mentioned before, there are some forms and documentation on this that we have that helps you through that as well. But once you get that set up, then we can come in, we can select the keyed import, and you select what database um, you're importing the data from. And that's what the mapping set up for. You enter in that particular shipment ID, and that customer ID comes in, that's actually our shipment information from the IFS applications. Uh, it's the company, the app, attention person, the address, one and two, the postal code and such over on your left. And then it brings in, you know, what's the UPS service required? Are you gonna be shipping ground, next day air? It's bringing in the default um, ship via codes for you as well. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and put the package on the scale, get it weighed, and you can start to change the values here manually here just for the demonstration purposes but it's utilizing all the latest and greatest data from the UPS system because this should be getting updated on a regular basis from UPS on, on their own side and you can put in some additional information uh, you can also go into the options and put in some handling charges so if you just had a flat rate per shipment or a percent of the shipment cost things like that that you wanted to pass back through the charges you can do that as well once you've got this completed, then you'll click the process shipment, which is what handles the right back functionality within IFS. What the end result here is then, uh, you end up with your charges back on the freight tracking tab here uh, with your line weight, your package charge, um, and other pieces of information. Um, some information on the UPS account that's being used, total charges and such. But over on the charges tab here, you'll notice we have a charge type set up for UPS freight. And this is set up in the basic data. You're setting up for a charge group of freight and it's bringing that information in so that once we create the invoice, the customer will see a line item on there for charges and they'll see that they're getting charged $10.94 for the freight, uh, for the UPS shipping. And it starts to go through a lot of the details here. It starts to put in the base price, um, if it's just for one particular line item, you can do shipments per line. Um, you can do some of your tax information, all pulls in here with all your normal charge information that, that you can utilize here. So we'll just scroll across slowly. It shows an invoice quantity of one, the gross amount totals um, as you go across. And then we also get our freight information here. This is what's used to send over some information to um, 
to UPS. It's grabbing you know our default account that we have on file with them and such. The nice thing about it though is once you go back to this freight interface, one of the nice things is you can write mouse button and you can go right to UPS tracking or FedEx tracking so you can set up the right mouse buttons to go to their their systems and pass that tracking number information right over to them. We don't do actual shipments within IFS for these demos but um, so I just kind of have a dummy one set up but it would bring up take you right to the UPS website with that tracking number and give you your status of, of what's going on with that. So that was a basic overview of the, the freight interface and the end result of what you get when you when you run through the UPS world ship for example and, and you have things inter set up for the interface. Uh, it worked very well. I get those charges back in. There is some basic data set up um, as mentioned earlier so I'll go through some of those screenshots and then we'll get into some more details here in a moment. So the basic data um, we've got the delivery terms you're going to be familiar with, but you can say whether or not you want to add the freight charge to the order. Um, so as you're just utilizing these, you'd set these up for the different shipping delivery terms that you have uh, with that customer uh, or for your customer base. And then whether or not you want to add the handling charge, which is kind of a fixed price or a percentage of the shipment on there. You get to decide if you're going to pass that on to the customer or not. Um, there's also some additional information on the ship via codes. Um, those are already in the basic data, but are used by the freight interface. Um, so you get uh, kind of the, the interface type. For example, we've got set up for via one. We can set it up for a UPS. We define that for. We can define the charge types, so we can track those and see, you know, run reports and analysis and, and things like that on, on the freight information that's going on. And then uh, whether or not, again, you want to add the handling charge uh, for the packages. Uh, there's some other basic forms here with the uh, ship service UPS service types, or if you're using Clipper Ship or FedEx or the Agile such, uh, our Agile applications, you, you can utilize, set up their service types for each of them. And then you also have the billing options, which is some information that's used by, if in this case, UPS, and what do they need to need to see. You can also add some additional fields, kind of free form user defined fields that you might want to pass. Um, between the with the freight interface um, if you need to pass temperature or moisture or you know, different different characteristics that are very unique to your particular product we have 10 out of the box ones that are that are available and then you can just configure that through the UPS uh, uh, the mapping that you do between uh, <coughs> IFS and the and the shipping application that's being used And then we also have a few other things, the sales charge groups um, you can set up. Um, your order types, uh, you're probably all familiar with those, but you would want to uh, uh, utilize this a couple different ways. One is uh, we definitely want to put a stop after the create delivery note. Um, that's what allows, at that point in time, or, or yeah, right after the, the crate delivery note, because that that point in time is when you would go over to the freight interface, uh, over to the UP, the terminal that's actually running like the UPS world ship, and enter in all the information, let it write back, and then at that point, then you'd want to continue on with printing your delivery note and creating an invoice and such. So uh, it's important to utilize the right order type for these. Uh, delivery terms, um, another basic data set up um, where you can calculate the freight charge and you're collecting the charge um, and in apps apps 10 now we also utilize this block for use uh, functionality too so um, you have ship via codes um, again uh, some additional basic data that needs to be set up and you start to enter this information in your normal customer order address order address info you make sure you have the right delivery terms and ship via these can be set up on the customer so when you use that particular address id for this particular customer it'll automatically pull in the right information for you but you can also change these um, for the actual customer order so if normally you send it one way and you want to change the ship via on the customer order, you can you can make that change as well. This just allows you to set up the default for that customer. We set up some freight interface information on that customer record. And you can define the default billing options for each freight system that you're using. And then there's a residential address information that would get passed over to, to the freight interface uh, solutions. Your basic data on your customer, it'll utilize the default 
<coughs> uh, method um, and address. So when it pulls in information over into UPS World Chip and it was saying, you know, what's what's the email, what's the phone number to use, it'll pull in your default one. So you'd want to make sure those are set up properly as well. And once we get into the process flow here, you know, you're going to enter a customer order. Um, just as you normally would, enter in a customer order line, put in your part, put your quantity in, get your pricing set and such, save it, and then you start to process that. <coughs> your delivery terms and ship via codes are defaulted from the customer master, but you could change that at the order level, and you can also change it at the line level. If different order, if you have 10 different order lines and they're each getting shipped different ways, uh, you, you, can, you can do that as well if you want to. Um, the customer order line address information here, this is what it would look like, but if you're on a customer order line, you write mouse button and you go into the address details, you'll see this new freight information tab here as well. And we have the freight info tab with some default information that's coming in. And to get into kind of just an overview here, um, just a little different way to look at it. There's a couple different options um, to do the, to have the freight interface, uh, especially within the later versions of IFS now with 9 and 10. We've got some of the new shipment functionality that's come out. So we still have the normal, normal order flow where you go through the quick order flow handling and you can have things automate all the way through the delivery note and auto create the invoice and such. But we've added something else called the shipment functionality. Um, and we'll get into that in just a minute. So. If you're using things um, um, the way you may have for years, um, you'd be entering in a customer order, you reserve it, you pick it. Once you get to that delivery stage, that's where you have to kind of stop the order flow process and you're going to do the interface to the freight interface software at that point. <clears throat> um, and that'll add the charges, record your tracking number and stuff like that, and then create your invoice. And with that, you know, again, it's just going to show up on your freight tracking tab. Uh, with your tracking number, your date, your line weight, your package charges, once you process all that. Um, delivery note number is used to identify the delivery in UPS and pulls all that information into the UPS world chip. So that's your delivery ID number coming in from IFS. We also now, if you're utilizing the newer functionality in IFS apps uh, 9 and 10 and such, uh, and going forward, apps 11 will have it as well, but the prepare shipment functionality kind of allows you to prepare that shipment, and it's a little different different way of, of doing the process, but it, it allows you to kind of do some staging of the shipping, and that also has the freight information staged in, so we'll have the freight tracking information here, um, but it's based on the shipment ID. So you'll see shipment 92. This is a new form for the later versions of IFS, um, <clears throat> but that'll be your shipment number. You start to define what shipment lines for that customer that you're going to be shipping and you kind of organize it and stage it and you'll notice though now if you have the freight interface you'll have the freight tracking information in here. So it'll be recorded on that customer order line as well but it also records this in the freight interface and you can get this shipment staged up and process the shipment and, and run from a right mouse button you just create the freight, <coughs> the freight tracking and it'll, it'll pull in from the UPS world ship as well. Uh, the other process flow that's, that can be utilized in the freight interface is the RMA, the Return Material Authorization. So if you create an RMA and um, you need to get the tracking info for that RMA and you're handling that uh, for the customer um, and getting that RMA ready, um, you can prepare the freight using that freight inter integration as well to process the return. And just like on the customer order line, um, you can receive that tracking data for your RMAs uh, directly into the RMA form on the f new freight tracking tab. So that's another form in IFS. If you're utilizing it, you'd, you'd get the benefit of being able to track that. And then just again, here's just some a few more screenshots of the actual, here's a UPS world ship, for example. Um, when you come in here, uh, this would be running on the terminal out in the shipping department. You're going to enter in the information to UPS World Ship with your sh your shipment ID or your delivery ID that you'd have, and that'll pull in all this information. You start to put in the weights, either type it in manually or uh, if you have a scale, most likely next to it and hooked up, you'd just put the packages on the on the scale to weigh them. 
And once you weigh them, you can click the process shipment to calculate the total shipment cost. Um, you can also add in the handling charges per shipment um, or, or per package if you want to. That's all done through the standard functionality in the, in this case, the UPS World Ship. And the end result is once you process that shipment, uh, it will be writing back the data to IFS through our interface and it'll update the actual customer order. It'll update the shipment information or the uh, RMA, depending on what you're doing that order tracking for. And depending on the delivery term settings uh, and your basic data that we looked at earlier, it'll create the charges, bring in the charge type, the charge group, and get it ready for, for invoicing for the customer. And again, you can write mouse button from any of the customer order line, uh, the freight tracking information, get the UPS tracking number, and you can go right to their website. So a few things to, to note. Um, uh, for, for this, you know, we are, do have the capability to create multiple packages from one delivery key in the shipper system and then send back the data correctly so that you can create multiple packages. It's all going against one delivery ID, so it'll just update IFS with, with the correct uh, tracking information for each package um, against that, that order line or that order. And you can always void a shipment from the shipper software. So once you void it, it'll write back to IFS and it'll update the customer order um, as long as the order line's not invoiced yet. Um, the invoice for the customer order will show the freight charges as a separate line item. And then there's other tables for monitoring the freight transactions. Gives you all the detailed information, uh, the freight details, delivery details, and any freight errors. If it can't write something back for whatever reason, it'll notify you and you can take action on it. A few requirements that you want to consider. Um, obviously, you'll need to have shipping software. You can go to UPS World Ship, you can go to FedEx and get those pretty easy. Uh, the other ones you'd work with with those companies directly as well. Um, but you need to acquire that. And then the customer is running on IFS applications 2003 or later. And um, you would want to make sure that you can install that in the test and production environments. You'd get a regular build and delivery from the IFS uh, team, and it's just like installing a patch or, or any other delivery from IFS. And once you do that, then uh, you'd set it up and configure it. We do have a fairly lengthy uh, installation document that goes through the details of all the mappings and such, for at least for the, I, uh, the UPS and, and FedEx piece of it. So um, it should be pretty intuitive for most people to go through and, and do. Um, you are responsible for setting up the necessary basic data table. You can always work with our services team though as well. And uh, we prefer you don't have any existing modifications or UPS world ship that would interfere with the installation or operation of this functionality. If you think you do, talk to us and, and, and we'll, we'll help you through that and figure out what, what, what could be the issue. Um, obviously a few of the benefits we wanna push uh, forward here is really reducing the time for processing shipments. You've got that automatic interface. It saves a duplicate entry. Um, nobody has to go back into the customer order itself manually and type in the charge information or go find it. After the shipment's been sent, it's happening in real time. As soon as you process that shipment, it's writing back to IFS um, and it's ready for, for invoicing then. Um, ensure proper billing. You know, we, there are no data entry errors and things like that. It's it's doing the interface automatically and handling those charges for you and hopefully eliminate errors on any incorrect addresses or not marking resident, residential shipments and et cetera based on your basic data that you set up. And then uh, hopefully reducing credits um, from incorrectly entered freight charges. And um, it does you know a, a good, good job at you know, taking advantage of changes on the fly. You can quickly void a shipment. You can add a new shipment information once you've voided it for that customer order line. Um, you, can, you can make changes and you're all u utilizing the, uh, the shipment tools uh, to, to do those, those shipping functions in the UPS world ship. And that interface is handling all those updates um, as required. Um, the freight interface is considered a complementary product and comes with maintenance and support. So you'd work with your client manager um, in IFS North America to, to work on the, the pricing and, and getting that all set. Um, we'll update and maintain the customer records in the IFS lifecycle support system, management system. So we always know that you've got the freight interface and um, it's, it's upgradable um, as, as you do go through your upgrades and such. Um, it is available on the latest IFS application versions, and um, we do offer periodic updates as needed. Um, if there's any changes to any shipping systems and we have to provide updates, we, we do that based on the maintenance that, that 
that's collected on, on the interface, and it is supported by IFS North America. Um, there is some standard specifications available for that freight interface. It gives you all the details uh, to help you get started and set up and, and explain a little more detail than, than what I have in, in this presentation. And if you are interested in moving forward with this, uh, feel free to contact your client manager for more details. Um, I thank you for your time.